Breathing is one of those miracles done for us by the body. We're snatching oxygen out of thin air. Thankfully, we don't need to think about how to do it. But unlike the other automatic functions of the body, we can choose how to breathe. And it turns out that there are simple principles for breathing that if we follow them, can radically affect almost every aspect of our lives. And these principles are far from new. The ancients understood how important the breath was. The ancient Chinese thought the breath was so important that they equated the energy, the whole universe, with the breath, qi. We also see this in ancient India. And in Hawaii, the most powerful healers were known as the masters of the breath. We live in a really exciting time where we can learn all these ancient ideas, but also science is finally catching up and showing a wealth of evidence that indeed breathing well can affect our mental health, anxiety, depression, handling stress, and our physical health, sleep, high blood pressure, diabetes, asthma, and the list continues. So today I invite you to explore three principles of powerful breathing with me. We're here in beautiful Scotland and I invite you to do some breathing with me in the session so we can actually experience these principles for ourselves. A quick disclaimer, I'm not a doctor. I have linked in the description loads of books for you to get your teeth into and podcasts. And I hope that, yeah, I'm, I'm sharing what I've been learning on my journey over the last four years, studying Qigong and Tai Chi and integrating these breath practices into my life. So I hope these are offerings for you to explore and to think about and to integrate into your own life. So let's jump into things. And the first question you may have is how is it even possible that the breath can be related to all these different things in the body? Well, it comes down to this amazing web of complexity, our nervous system, and in particular, the autonomic nervous system, which connects the brain and the lungs and the heart, digestion, all these different things. And these are all controlled through two nervous systems, two subsystems, one called the fight or flight or the sympathetic system, system which amps everything up and then the rest and digest which switches everything off. So the fight and flight response you've heard about and this is the system that kicks in when you're walking in the woods in Scotland back in the day when suddenly a bear comes out behind a tree and what do you do? You take a big inhale, the fear signals are sent from your eyes rushing sending alert signals to the rest of the body, you take a big inhale because you're, if you're about to have a bare knuckled fist fight with a grizzly, you need as much oxygen as you can get. The heart starts beating quicker to send all this oxygen throughout the body. The nervous system then goes down to your stomach and says, hey, stop digesting. I ate some cookies an hour ago. I don't need them if I'm in a life or death situation. So the nervous system says, stop that and conserve the energy for what matters. So that's the fight or flight system. It switches everything on, it activates you, it agitates you, it, it kind of yeah, makes you alive uh, when you need to be in stressful situations. Then there's the rest and digest. Now this is undoing all of the fight or flight work. And this is like someone after a house party who comes around with herbal teas, gives you a pat on the back and says, everything's gonna be okay. You take a sip of the tea, ah. <sighs> you feel relaxed, you let out a nice sigh. You have these calming, soothing signals flowing through your body, through the rest and digest system. It slows your breath down, and with longer exhales, it slows your heart rate down, your digestion restarts, and you reduce agitation in the system. So that is how the breath is connected to everything in the body, and yeah, the fight or flight, the sympathetic nervous system switching everything on, the rest and digest, or the parasympathetic, switching everything off. Now, something to note about these relationships is that in, in reality, the nervous system is a two-way street. So information can travel from the breath up to the brain and the brain to the breath. So we saw with the bear, the fear signal was sent uh, and, and that emotion was sent through the body. Everyone alert, you take a big gasp uh, and yeah, you breathe quicker. But actually, if you breathe quicker, that also sends the alert out the other way. And so we can experience this for ourselves now. So if you just take a breath, just a short, shallow inhale, you feel that kind of jolt and that tension. So that is actually, yeah, sending out signals to the rest of your body saying alert. 
And of course the opposite is true. When we had the herbal tea, that feeling of comfort, ah, it's not a coincidence that when we see puppies and cute babies, we go, ah, a nice long exhale. Uh, because yeah, you're just calming the system down and that's when the emotion of comfort slows the breath down. But also, crucially, if we slow the breath down, then we can affect the rest of the system. And so that is the theory and the understanding why our first principle works, which is slowing down the breath. And we can experience this for ourselves. So I invite you to join me for our first breathing. It's kind of like a meditation. When, when you breathe and you focus on the breath, you get a meditation for free with it. So it's quite an easy way into mindfulness and all this world. So if you want to join me, I invite you just to close your eyes and pay attention to the breath. You don't have to do anything strange with it. Just yeah, pay attention to how you're breathing right now. And if you can, try and breathe in and out through the nose. And then slowly, just intend the breath to slow down. Gently does it. And then together, we're going to try something called four, seven, eight breathing, where we breathe in for four, we hold for seven, and we release for eight. And just see how that feels and, and what sort of experience we have when we do this slower, more mindful breathing. So we breathe in for four, two, three, four, hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and release two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, hold, and release. Inhale, hold, and release. So why don't you try a few of these in your own rhythm and in the silence, just be curious about what this experience is and maybe how it's changing how you're feeling in your body. Wonderful, and just spend a moment just reflecting on what that experience was for you, and then in your own time, you can open your eyes. Yeah, so what, what was your experience there of slowing down the breath? I mean, certainly for me, just a sense of calming and grounding. Although, yeah, I've set things up now. I've been, I've been rained on multiple times. It's about two degrees right now in the Scottish winter coming up to December. And so, yeah, just taking those breaths then, even just right now, has just slowed me down, grounded me, uh, and just, yeah, calmed me down. So that's a wonderful practice. And yeah, four, seven, eight breathing, I do it every night before I go to sleep now. And it's a really powerful tool because, you know, we're thinking throughout the day and we can use these breathing techniques to just give ourselves permission to slow down. We actively, through our breath, can help ourselves enter into this rest and digest state of being. And so we can get to sleep more easily. And we're thinking all day, I do five, four, seven, eight breaths, and then give myself permission to switch off my mind. Uh, and yeah, that slow, mindful breathing helps with that. So are these new age practices? Oh no, these are very ancient. This is an ancient yogic practice, pranayama or kumpaka. And you can see from that graph, we have the inhale, hold and exhale, and that is thousands of years old. And so something to note is that in a world, you know, where we have the internet, and obviously it's amazing, where we can have literally all of human knowledge accessible at the end of our hands, that we assume that learning always comes from the outside in, from the books, from Google. But actually, 
the ancients understood this, and it's not just the ancient um, Indians, through their own experience, without science, without randomized controlled trials. You know, they were just present with their body and seeing what their body could teach them. And of course, we experienced that for ourselves then when we tried that breathing, is that we had that almost instantaneous calming down. And so the breath is one of these interesting practices where actually it's our journey of self-discovery where we may take ideas from, you know, hopefully this video and books that you may read and other practices and ideas, but actually it only really becomes meaningful when you integrate it into your experience. Something to note about how fast we were breathing, we we're doing three breaths a minute there. And so that is a great de-stress tool, uh, but you may be wondering, well, how do I breathe normally? Because that is, um, yeah, quite slow. And there's a great book uh, by James Nestor called Breath. And in it, he recommends five seconds on the inhale, five seconds on the exhale. So that's about six breaths per minute. Now the average in society is 12 to 20. So two to th three to four times quicker. And this has serious effects. It, being in that constant agitated state of fight or flight where we're breathing quickly, it agitates the mind. The agitation of the mind causes faster breathing. It is actually found to be related to many of our health crises. And it has interesting implications for example, with anxiety and depression, which we assume are problems of the mind, actually may have a physiological basis in our breath. You know, I, I struggled with anxiety when I finished university and I didn't have any idea that I could use my breath to calm myself down. Uh, and so, yeah, it's quite empowering to realize that th this is available to us. And just a fun note about the ancient yogis is that they too had this understanding that faster breathing led to health problems. They actually believed that we came into this world with a, a, a limited number of breaths. And so either we could breathe really quickly and live a shorter lifespan, or we can breathe slower and we live for longer. And yeah, turns out they kind of had a point. So that's our first principle of powerful breathing, breathe slowly. Default, five in, five out. De-stress, four, seven, eight. So a question you may have now is that, all right, that, that all sounds good breathing slow, but it is a bit strange given, didn't we say at the start that oxygen was important and the ancient Chinese equated the breath with the fundamental energy of life. And now we're saying to breathe less. Isn't that a bad idea? Well, it turns out with the body that we actually take the oxygen that we need. And actually when we breathe slower, we breathe deeper and this leads to more efficient breathing. Because if you think about it, 20 breaths a minute, which is the kind of the higher end of, of how people breathe in, in modernity, you're only allowing the breath to get to here. And so your breath is stuck in your, in your throat and your mouth. It can't get into the little sacs in the lungs. And so it means only 50% of the air that you breathe is actually processed. Then if you breathe 12 breaths a minute, 70% of the air is processed. And then if you do those six breaths a minute, 85% of your breath is processed. So that means you're getting the same amount of oxygen, the oxygen that your body needs, but you, you're breathing less and so you're agitating your body less and it's ultimately more efficient. Awesome, right? And so we want to be able to breathe deep into our bodies. And this is again, and not a new idea. Here's a quote from one of our favorite philosophers on the YouTube channel, Zhuangzi from Taoism. The breathing of the wise person comes from their heels while most people breathe only from their throats. So yeah, all the way to the heels. Now he is talking about diaphragmatic breathing or, or belly breathing or natural breathing. And you know, he's, he's taking it even further down to the heels. But this idea that if we breathe slower, trying to allow our, ourselves to breathe deep into our lungs, which go all the way down to here. And so how do we do this? Well, let's just check in with how we're breathing currently. So if you want to See for yourself, put a hand on your chest and then a hand on your stomach and just take some breaths and just be conscious about what hand is moving. Is it your upper hand or your lower hand? Are you kind of going up and down when you breathe or is your stomach going in and out? So if your hand, if your upper hand is moving, it means that actually you're using your neck and your, your chest and creating unnecessary tension. And so it means that actually you're not getting as deep as you could do. And so we, we want to, when we're breathing, to 
breathe deep into us so that our, our stomach expands and comes out as we breathe deep into our lungs and then the stomach comes back in. And so that involves releasing tension. And here is a photo of a Qigong master and the Qigong masters always have chi bellies. They have a bit of a belly as they get older. And that's because they're not that bothered about looking skinny or having a six pack. They understand that they breathe more powerfully when they release tension in the stomach. And so why is it that it's more powerful when we release tension in the stomach and we breathe deep into us? Well, if you think about a bellows, that thing that you use to blow air on a fire, as you bring your hands out, the volume in the bellows increases and the air gets sucked in and as you push your hands together the volume decreases and the air is thrust out. So that's what, hap that's what happens when you release tension in your stomach. You release tension, your stomach comes out, there's more space for your lungs to expand into which then sucks more air in so you, the volume of the air that you breathe increases and then a slight tension on the stomach and it, and it goes back up. So let's see if we can experience this for ourselves. We can, through just our conscious intention, intend for our breath to get deeper. And over time, our bodies learn how to breathe like this habitually. So it may feel a bit strange right now, um, but yeah, let's practice it together and then you can take this away uh, for your own practice. So literally just as an act of will, when you breathe in now, breathe, imagine and visualize your breath going deep into your belly and release any tension, if you can, in your stomach. So you may find your stomach expanding outwards. So that's something for you to explore, is that, yeah, releasing of tension, breathing down deep into your stomach, and one more visualization for you, and you can do this with me, is taking our hands and as we breathe in, imagining our ribs expanding outwards. So we breathe deep into us and yeah, this kind of expansive breathing. So we want to breathe this way rather than that way, expanding horizontally outwards. So ideas for you to think about. Breathe deep is our second principle. How do we do it? Use your intention, release stomach tension. So our final principle, and something I've been talking about, uh, if you remember from the first breathing that we did together, is breathe through your nose. Now you may have heard some different voices saying that this is important. Certainly the ancient Chinese thought it was important. Here's a quote for you. The nose is the heavenly door. Breath must be taken in through it. Never do otherwise, for breath would be in danger and illness would set in. So this is from Master Great Nothing. Strong words, right? And then there are tribes in North America that considered nose breathing so important that when their children were asleep, they would prop the head uh, like this, so to keep the mouth closed. And the parents would watch over the children and close the mouth if they found it was open, forcing the child to breathe through the nose. So the whole tribe would breathe through their nose all day, every day. So sorry for the change in background. I was filming, my microphone ran out of battery and then it started raining. And now it snowed. So we're going to finish the session here. This is what you get when you try and film outside in the Scottish winter. But yeah, let's continue, shall we? So talking about nose breathing and we saw from the ancient Chinese and these indigenous American tribes that they thought was really important. Let's turn to nature to see what nature can teach us because we are a mammal, right? And so out of the thousands of species of mammal on this planet, guess who are the only ones that breathe through their mouth instead of their nose? Modern humans, domesticated dogs, and traumatized farm animals. So it's damning from the natural point of view that maybe we should be breathing through our nose. And when we look at the physiology, we understand why. So this is our nasal cavity. I didn't even realize it was this big or, or all the wonderful things that happened when we breathe through our nose. You'll know that the nostril has these little hairs that cleans the air as you breathe in. It takes out pollutants and particulates. And then the air in the nasal cavity is pressurized. So if you think about when you breathe through your mouth, that big gaping pipe versus the two little holes of your nostrils, 
to get the same amount of air in, you've got to force it through a smaller space so the pressure is higher. And so with that higher pressure, that put, puts pressure on your nasal and your airways. And so actually the more you breathe through your nose, the more your airways expand. And so actually breathing through your nose makes it easier to breathe and increases your, uh, your airways. Now, if you can't breathe through your nose currently and maybe you have a blocked nose, I've linked a video uh, to help you unblock it from Patrick McEwen. But the most empowering bit about this is that the more you breathe through your nose, the more it expands. And you can do that throughout your life. It's one of the few organs that can continue to grow after the age of 30. So more nose breathing creates more nose breathing. And so it's easier to do over time. So this is our third principle of powerful breathing. Breathe through the nose. When, all day, every day, how. Use your intention, simply st start deciding to breathe through your nose. And then a, a bit of a random trick from Patrick McEwen is to tape your mouth. So if you wake up in the night and you've got a dry mouth, it means you're probably mouth breathing through the night. And so that eight hours a day is really crucial. If you're breathing through your mouth throughout the night, then obviously it's going to be hard to bring nose breathing into your habitual way of breathing. And so Patrick McEwen recommends taping your mouth, taping it shut, and that just it doesn't have to be excessive, just a little bit. And that sends a message to your subconscious to say, breathe through the nose. And I've been doing that and found that's really helped me just habitually now breathe through my nose. So before we get into just summarizing what we've explored today and I'll share some ideas, some podcasts, etc. Why don't we try some Qigong? So Qigong is made up of two characters, Qi, energy and breath, and Gong, practice. And so like yoga, Qigong is one of these practices that, that is moving with the breath. And so it can actually be a really powerful thing that we can integrate into our lives too be present with our bodies, understand the power of the breath, uh, and then, yes, yeah, tap into this more natural breathing. So if you are just doing the dishes or watching this podcast daily, you can skip to the end to have the summary. But if you'd like to join me, I invite you to stand up and, yeah, let's just do some brief movements together and experience what moving with the breath feels like. So thank you for joining me. Let's just start off with some standing meditation simply standing, being present with the breath and seeing what that feels like. So Qigong standing, we are upright and relaxed. So if you imagine a piece of string attached to the top of your head, attached to the ceiling, pu pulling you gently upwards, but then you are relaxing downwards. You've got a bend in your knees and then the weight is across the whole of your foot. Your feet like to feel connected to the earth, so don't just have your weight in your heels. Instead, yeah, you may Bring your weight slightly forward so your, your weight's distributed across the whole of your foot. And just settle into that Qigong standing. And then we can bring our hands together just below our belly button and I invite you to close your eyes and connect with the breath. No need to change anything, just be present with it. Breathing in and out through the nose. Releasing any abdominal tension, allowing it to go deep into you. And that becomes easier when we slow down the breath. So just gently intend to slow down. And while we are here present with the breath, we can just take a moment to thank it. You know, it's one of these miracles done for us by the body that we don't need to think about. But when we do think about it, as we've explored today, it's a powerful tool that can help calm us down. We can return back to it in stressful situations. And realizing that this is available to us, just thanking that powerful ability that is part of what it means to be human. And let's
let's bring some movement into the body now. So I need to warm up a bit. So let's just do some wrist rolls and some ankle rolls. Just, yeah, moving the ankle, rotating one of it, change direction, rotating both the other way. Moving the other ankle, rotating the wrists, and then moving the other way. So we'll just do one move and yeah, see what you think about this. So I invite you, so we, we're in our standing Qigong position, feet slightly wider than shoulder width apart, upright and relaxed, nice bend in the knees. And then we're gonna interlace the fingers and then we're gonna stretch up, breathe in, and then twist to the left, breathe out, not through the mouth. Look up to the sky, breathe in. And breathe out, hands outstretched. Back down to the center. We breathe in, interlace the fingers, reach to the sky. We breathe out, we twist. Breathe in, look to the sky. Breathe out, back to centre. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. So why don't you try a few of these and in the silence, just be present with what this experience is and being present with the breath and being curious about how you may feel a release of tension as you are present with the breath and the body. If you have any thoughts, just that's cool. Return back to the breath. Hands outstretched and return back to center. And to close, we can do our Tai Chi salute. So with your fist, with your left hand, palm over with your right, a bow and a thank you. So if you joined me, I hope you enjoyed that movement. In summary, the three ideas we've explored today. One, breathe slowly. Normal breathing, five seconds in, five seconds out then the 478 tool. Have a go at sticking that into your daily routine. You can do it before a meditation practice or doing it last thing at night. Really powerful to help you down regulate. Then breathe deeply, releasing stomach tension. Use your intention. You'll find that, yes, okay, it's a conscious process right now, but with practice, it can become automatic. Your body can learn it. And then finally, breathe through the nose when, all day, every day. So I hope you've got something out of today. If you want to get deeper, this book by James Nestor, Breath, is fantastic. There's so much in it. I've also linked podcasts and TED Talks for you to get your teeth into. I hope you continue your journey. Let's close with a metaphor from the comic book world. If you imagine that you got an opportunity to meet Batman, at least you don't know it's Batman, it's just Bruce Wayne, and you go to his big fancy house, you have a look around, you're driving back home after the day and you think, meh, this guy's pretty average. He's just an aloof, rich person. 
Now you only think that because you didn't inspect the bookcase well enough. Because if you'd pulled back one of the books, you would have found the whole bookcase slid away and there behind that bookcase was the Bat Cave with all these awesome tools and powerful trinkets and toys that Batman has. He's capable of much more than you imagined. That's you. We are all capable of much more than we could possibly know. We have this latent potential within us and the breath is so simple, it's free, accessible to all of us and yet we've seen it can powerfully affect many aspects of our lives. And so that's really empowering that actually we can consciously tap into some of that power that we have locked within us. So some food for thought to integrate into your own life and practice. I hope you breathe easy, my friend, and these ideas help you. I'm gonna get back inside now, getting a bit chilly. See you next time.